It's time for another frequently asked watercolor question. Yep, that's right. Question you asked, and you, and you over there. Oh, and I see you back there. You asked it too. Mm -hmm. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. So yeah, another one of those episodes for a question I've been asked over and over and over again. Which watercolor paper should I pick? Now by which, I mean which type. Hot press, cold press, rough, 140 pound, 300 pound, bright white, natural white, block, sheets. We're going to talk about all those things, but here's a hint. I'm just going to give you some guidelines as to the characteristics that each have, and you're going to be the one that decides. But hopefully this will help. You don't care what kind of watercolor paper you paint on? Walls. You like to paint on walls. Were you the one that put that graffiti in the bathroom? So anyway, let's get into it. There are three basic types of paper and two basic weights. Actually, there are more than two basic weights, but there are two common weights that are used by watercolorists. And paper comes in different formats, sheets, blocks, pads. Now, just for clarification, I'm gonna be talking about 100% cotton paper today. So I'm not talking about pulp paper. It's fine if you paint on pulp paper and that's what you can get. I recommend and the techniques I teach are on cotton paper. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. So let's start with the easy ones first. Blocks, pads, and sheets are just different forms in which you can buy the paper to kind of match the way you like to paint. So this is gonna be a personal choice. Sheets are probably one of the most economical ways to buy because you'll pay 10, 12, $15 US to get a full sheet. And a full sheet is typically 22 by 30, I believe. You can cut out of that sheet any size that you want. Sheets are double-sided so you can paint on both sides. Usually sheets are cylinder mold made, so they'll have a deckle edge on two edges, but they're produced on a roll, so they'll come off and then they're cut. So two ends will usually have a cut edge and two edges will have a deckled edge. But generally speaking, uh, this is true with arches, which is my favorite. Sheets, pads, and blocks are all the same. So really, there's just a lot of preference there. And when you're talking about a lot of these high quality brands, and I believe this is true of almost all the high quality cotton brands, they're two-sided. I know Arches is, you can paint on one side, especially the cold press. It's a little rougher on one side, a little smoother on the back. We're gonna talk about cold press and hot press in a minute. So in summary, choose the one that fits your painting style, your storage needs, the styles that you like to paint on. Choose the form that you like the best. It's just preference. All right, now let's talk about weight. 140 pound versus 300 pound. 300 pound is thirstier, soaks up more water, takes longer to dry. Very, very heavy, very sturdy, stands up to wet and wet washes very, very well. 140 pound is the most common, most economical, but 140 pound is more likely to buckle, especially larger sheets. The larger you get and the more water you use, the more buckling is going to be a problem. Some people don't mind painting on buckled paper. They don't care about it until the painting is over. Then it's a matter of whether you frame the piece or not and you want that buckling gone when the mat comes next to it. But there are ways to flatten buckled paper after you've painted on it. I'm not going to get into that here. But in general, it's up to you. It's up to your tolerance for buckling. If you have no tolerance for buckling, you're going to want to stretch your paper. And there's plenty of videos out there on how to stretch your paper. I hate stretching paper. I don't like to do it unless I'm painting big and I know that buckling is going to be a problem. That can happen when I'm doing a wet wash over a large area in a sky, for instance, or a large wet wash in the background. And I, I want that wash to travel a certain way. Instead, the buckling is making that pigments settle down into a valley. If I think that's going to happen, I will stretch. Now the solution to all of that, if you don't want to stretch, is 300 pound paper. You might get a little bit of warping, but you don't get any buckling. But it's also pretty expensive. And you usually have to paint with a little more water and a little more pigment to get the same intensity. Plus it takes a good bit longer to dry if it's really saturated. And yes, there is 90 pound, not very many watercolors paint on that. It buckles tremendously. It's usually used for drier media. 90 pound you'll find in some sketchbooks. So I'm not gonna deal with that. It's not used a lot. There are some good brands out there that make 90 pound paper, but you don't find it very often. And if you do, you're gonna de be dealing with more buckling than any other paper. Quality wise though, 90 pound is fine. 
All right, now for the big one. There's a little more to consider here when we're talking about finish. And this is where I get the most questions. You have three basic finishes. Hot press, cold press, and rough. Now first, let me just talk about cold press. Cold press is the all-purpose paper. It's the most popular. It's the most often painted on. If you're a beginner and you don't know what to choose and you don't know even how you want to paint, choose cold press. As you learn more about watercolor, watercolor paper and watercolor paper finishes, then I would suggest branching out and trying others if you suspect it might be something that you want to use. Let's talk about hot press. Hot press is smooth. The hot press finish gives you great crisp edges. Botanical artists uh, love hot press paper. It's most often chosen by them. You can, however, do great botanical art on cold press paper too, so that's not a given. But hot press is usually chosen for good crisp edge details where a lot of minute details are used. Because it's a smooth paper, it's great for drawing mediums that are added with watercolor or mixed media. Pen and ink, colored pencil, watercolor pencil. Again, it can be done on cold press too, but if you're wanting to get that clean, smooth edge detail like you usually want in pen and ink or colored pencil, hot press is probably going to be a great choice. Hot press is quicker drying, so when you put down the washes, and, and hot press will take washes just as well as cold press, but because you don't have so many pockets, hot press will dry much quicker. If you like granulation, granulation shows better on hot press paper. The reason again is all that texture that's on cold press just kind of takes the pigment that settles out and creates granulation and distributes it a little more evenly. On hot press, your colors are brighter, brighter and more intense. Again, the reason comes in with the texture. For one thing, more pigment sits on the top and more light is transmitted right back to the viewer. And so the colors will appear brighter. A little less intense, it's not dramatic, but a little less intense on cold press. Dry brush effects. Now dry brush effects are gonna be different. You're, it's difficult to get dry brush effects on hot press. You can do it, but uh, it takes a little doing. Now, if you're wanting to do a dry brush, it just skips over the surface, kind of creates that lost and found texture, you know, that hit and miss kind of skippy texture look. Um, you're going to want to use cold press or rough. Now, let's talk about some other pros for cold press. As I already mentioned, it's the most common. Um, it's the most all-purpose. You can do just about any technique on it. You can do crisp details on there, not quite as crisp and sharp as they would be on hot press, but you can do it. You can get smoother washes on cold press. Now the difference is not dramatic. I've done very nice, clean, smooth washes on hot press too. But on cold press, because of that texture, uh, I think it's easier for beginners to do nice graduated washes or very even flat washes. Texture is just very good at dispersing pigment and dispersing water. So you have a lot of water and pigment control. And it's another reason that I highly recommend cold press for beginners. Now rough, let's talk about rough for a minute. Rough is purely an effect paper, in my opinion. Rough shares almost all of the same characteristics with cold press. They're both textured paper. Rough is just a little more textured than cold press is. So if you like the texture on cold press, but you want to take it yet another notch up, you're a loose painter, for instance, you want to use a lot of dry brush, there's no reason I see to paint on rough unless you're going for those effects. I've not really found any other advantage to painting on rough. It's very commonly used, very loose landscape artists, maybe loose floral painters. So in my opinion, it's the only reason to choose rough. One final word about finish. There is no standard for finish. So one brand's hot press may not be the same as another brand's hot press. And this is even more true with cold press and rough. An Arches cold press may not be the same as the texture on a Stonehenge aqua cold press. In fact, I can tell you they're not. They're going to be slightly different patterns and slightly different textures. And because a lot of these cotton papers are two-sided, the opposite sides may be different too. So do expect that they're not going to all be the same. But in general, all of these characteristics apply to all the brands. And also, sizing differs. Sizing is the gelatin or the matter that they put into paper to keep color from absorbing too much. If water and pigment absorbed into the paper too much, you wouldn't be able to paint. 
as soon as you touched to the paper it would all soak in like a paper towel so all paper manufacturers add sizing and the amount of sizing differs among brands greatly it's what allows you to lift more on some papers and less on others thanks everyone i hope that was a help i hope that's the information you're looking for when you go to decide and buy a paper and i hope that will also help you if you have a stock of paper decide which paper to use for the next painting you do so thanks again everyone thanks patrons for making this channel happen we will see everybody in the next video